Good day, everyone. I was born and raised in Detroit. Growing up there, I saw people like me running things. This is a courtroom, not a circus, so we're gonna calm down. I'm sorry. What I found there was a passion that I didn't know existed. This is the bottom line. I'm excited to free fall into the limitless possibilities with we the people. So many are fearful of the law. They think it's something that works against them. I think you need to begin to accept responsibility for your mistakes. We are the people. Elena Marin claims her boyfriend sold their precious dog while she was in prison. George Damoni says the pooch was a painful reminder that his ex cheated with her cellmate. Mr. Damoni is countersuing for $1,450. All rise. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lauren Lake presiding. Please be seated. Hello, Your Honor. Hello. Thank you, Sean. Good day, everyone. Good day. This is the case of Marin versus Demoni. Ms. Marin, you are suing Mr. Demoni for $2,600, the cost of a dog you say he sold. Yes. All right. And Mr. Demoni, you are countersuing Ms. Marin for $1,450 for two years of veterinarian expenses. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right. I'd like to start with you, plaintiff. Ms. Marin, tell us about the dog. Yes, ma'am. So I was dating George. We met at a dog park. He had a dog and I had a dog. And that's how we hit it off. We exchanged information and eventually when we became friends, uh, his dog passed away. And then shortly after that, my dog ended up passing away as well. So, I mean, quite naturally, we became even closer and we eventually formed a relationship and we purchased a dog together. And so you guys decided, she... let's get another dog? Yes, okay. absolutely. We what kind of up, dog did you get? We got a boxer. We ended up moving in together and we got a boxer. We got her registered um, together and we purchased her together. Her do you have proof Gia. of that registration? I absolutely May do. May I see it, please? Yes, ma'am. Um, is it okay if I just hand the entire folder to you? Okay. That's just all fine. I'll evidence. take all of that evidence. Thank okay. you so much. So, Mr. Demoni, do you agree with that testimony thus far? You yes, agreed I do. to get a dog together? Yes, we did. All right, and you got Gia. Yes. G is a boxer. And I see here you registered, all right, to both of you, and you paid $3,500 for Gia. Okay. You all lived together and took care of the dog together? Yes, ma'am. We okay. both purchased the dog together. Like I said, we got to register together. We lived together. I worked from home. I was an accountant, and he did not work from home, so I spent the majority of the time with Gia. I was with her all the time. She became family. We traveled with her together. We bought airline tickets for her. So she was Oh, she's one of the dogs that ride on the plane and absolutely. do all that. She was little enough she could go under the seat in front? Yes, absolutely. Okay, all right. <laughs> That's when she was a little smaller. Gia too, was so. on the move. So, <laughs> Mr. Demoni, you've got Gia. You're sharing the dog with Ms. Marin. Yes. She says the dog spent most of the time with her. I presume that's because you were working out of the home? Yes. All right, did you all share expenses for the dog as it relates to care and food as well, or was one person responsible for that? No, we both shared everything equally. So you shared rent, you shared expenses, and you shared all of the care for the dog? Yes. All right, so Ms. Marin, what happens, you say, he sold the dog. You're suing him because the dog got sold? What happened? Yes, so when I was working from home, I ended up, you know, doing tax fraud for the company that I worked for, and I was incarcerated for three years as a result of that. Okay. And during my incarceration was when our dog, Gia, was sold. However, I didn't find out until I was released. Really? Yes. So, Mr. Damoni, how is it that you sold Gia I mean, Ms. Marin had made a mistake. Most certainly she was serving time, paying her debt to society. In just three years, you decided to sell Gia? Yes, I what did. What happened? Well, during her time in there, like she said, I did visit her, you know, at least once a month. You know, wrote her emails and everything. And during that time, she forgot to mention that she fell in love with her cellmate. Oh, okay. Yes. So, why'd you sell the dog? Even with that? Because uh, she told me this two years into her serving her time. So I found out that she fell in love with her like the first year she was in there. Even though I was visiting her all this time, writing her, she did, she did not mention this to me. I was hurt, I was devastated. I just couldn't bear to even look at Gia anymore because Gia reminded me of Elena, what me and Elena had. So you're going to visit her, 
when she finally does come clean, because at some point, Ms. Marin, you just decide, I need to tell him. Absolutely. And, and you did. Absolutely. You wrote him an email and you explained Yes, ma'am. And I also explained in the email, too, that I was sorry and that when I got out, I had intended for us to continue to share custody of Gia. Okay. And so when you got that, you were so upset, you said every time you looked at Gia, it reminded you of Ms. Marin. Yes. Coming up. Were you trying to get back at Ms. Marin for developing another relationship? No, not at all. Not at all. I couldn't do that. I mean, I'm not like that. I wouldn't do that to her. You sold the dog. And later. Neither one of y'all making no sense over here, Mr. Lastro or your witness, Mr. Lena, because Mr. Lena, you basically just said, I'm the maintenance man, I'm not no plumber. So I don't want to hear nothing you got to say about plumbing. If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6878. You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. We're back with the case of Elena Marin, who brought her ex-boyfriend George Damoni to court for selling their dog. And so at some point you were just like, I gotta sell this dog because it's like messing with my head? Or what was going on? Well, I fell into a depression. Like this, this, this woman here, I wanted to spend my life with her. You know, I even got an engagement ring. You know, I, I wanted to marry her. Because you're thinking this three years is, I mean, like I said, she made a bad mistake, but this three years is temporary. Yes. And when she comes out, I want to get married. Exactly. Okay, so you bought the engagement ring, everything. Why do you sell the dog? Because this ain't Gia's fault. Absolutely. I, don't know, I didn't know what to do, honestly. You know, I, didn't, I couldn't give it away to a friend because, honestly, I, didn't, I don't have many friends. So I thought selling her was uh, the right thing to do. And, you know, the expenses I spent on Gia, you know, I thought I can get some of that money back. Ms. Marin, how were you covering your half of Gia's expenses while you were away? So while I was away, he agreed that he would take care of Gia while I was incarcerated. Okay, and but did that was... care include just the physical care or did it also include the financial care? Did you agree it... to the financial care as well, yes. as well, Mr. Demoni? Yes, I did. So you said, don't worry about Gia, I got her. I'm gonna take care of her financially and I'm gonna take care of her. Yes. How much you sell her for? I sold her for half of what we paid for her for, so $17.50. Were you trying to get back at Ms. Marin for developing another relationship? No, not at all. Not at all. I couldn't do that. I mean, I'm not, I'm not like that. I wouldn't do that to her. You sold the dog? Yeah, but th that was for me. Why didn't After you at you least write her that you back? Take care of it. Why didn't you write her back and at least go in there and say, hey, I think having G around, you've moved on, but I'm still kind of here stuck. You know, he sold Gia for seventeen fifty to the couple. However, the Applegates also ended up taking Gia to the vet as well. And in the evidence I've given to you, it shows all the different veterinarian bills. So when you got out, you tracked down the people who had bought Gia. So when I got out, I contacted George and he gave me their information. And they basically said, oh, yeah, but they were willing to sell her back to you as long as you paid for the additional expenses they had incurred caring for her to that point. Okay, so I don't think she gave up her right to her dog. I also don't think she gave up her responsibility to care for the dog. Uh, Ms. Marin, you do understand that Mr. Demoni was only taking on all of these expenses because he loved you and he wanted to have a life with you. Please, you know, Judge, I did not intend on falling for my cellmate. That was not the plan. I love George. I still love George. He's like family. We were friends. You could have told, we told me. We were and I told you, George. I told you. However, what you failed to do is you did not tell me. I found out when I got out. And that's the problem that I have with this judge is he could have, just like I let him know what where my life was headed, he could have let me know that you know, it was difficult for him to continue to pay for Gia, number well, one. I completely understand that because I was an accountant and I know how much money I made and I know how much money I contributed and I know it was easier for the two of us, so I get that. Okay, I understand exactly what's going on here. I don't need to hear anymore. At the end of the day, you all bought the dog together. The paperwork shows that. You all both testified to the fact that you shared expenses. Mr. Demoni, you know, the dog did remind you of her. And that's very painful to still be kind of stuck in a place where you're caring for everything 
and you're still almost in a relationship that doesn't exist anymore. That is painful for you. So while I don't disagree that it was healthier for you to sell the dog, psychologically and financially, I do think you owed Ms. Marin the opportunity to at least have a say on where the dog went. With that said, you sold Gia for $1,750. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Half of which is $875. Whatever you sold her for, you should have at least sold it and then said, hey, I'm going to give you your half because you admitted I agreed that I'm going to take care of these expenses, right? Correct. All right. Now, Ms. Marin, there were, in fact, expenses related to Gia. Yes. And since you knew that he basically was counting on you all being together and that's why he was caring for the dog, you could have at least said to him, I'm going to pay you for half of these expenses. If I can't do it now, when I get out, I will pay you. All right? So this is what's fair in this court's opinion. Judgment for the plaintiff for $875, which is the half of the cost of what he sold Gia for, and judgment for the defendant on his counterclaim for... $725, which is half of the expenses it cost to care for her. Now, Ms. Marin, the reason why you are not recovering is because your desire to go get the dog back, that is what you did on your own. Yes, I understand yeah. why you did it, but at the same time, that is what you decided, and those are expenses that you need to care for. Judgment for the plaintiff for $875. Judgment for the defendant for $725 on his counterclaim. Good luck to you both. Court is adjourned. All rise. Judge Lake has ruled in favor of both parties. The defendant owes $150. Why, why didn't you just email me? You should have just said Why didn't you just tell me what, what was going on I with you? I did tell you. Come that on. was hard for me. I've from never been with a woman. You should have told me that from that. the beginning. I love you. I love you. You don't think I loved you? I loved you. I bought you a ring. What are you talking Please about? Please gather your things and follow me this way. You still way. want me to have it? Give it to me. Coming up. The piece that's hooked up had pulled away. What? Because it was overloaded and so when it was on like the spin cycle or whatever, it was like... What? You, you, you know I'm not a plumber, I'm just a maintenance guy, you know. <laughs> oh, Lord have <laughs> mercy. You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. Mark Lastro claims he sold a washing machine to his neighbor who then flooded his apartment. Tyler Ralston says the washer leaked because the plaintiff didn't install it properly. Mr. Ralston is countersuing for $750. Good day, everyone. Good day. This is the case of Lastro versus Ralston. Mr. Lastro, you are suing Mr. Ralston for $1,926 for damages to your apartment. Is that correct? That is correct. And Mr. Ralston, you are countersuing Mr. Lastro for repairs and plumbing fees. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. I'll start with the plaintiff. Sir, please explain. Yes, I had sold a uh, washer and dryer to uh, my uh, Tyler. He lived in the unit upstairs from me, and I sold it to him for $250. And then Mr. Lastro installed? Yes, ma'am. You have a background in plumbing, Mr. Lastro? Not really. My father did a lot of work around the house, and he taught me a, a thing or two, and it's a washer and dryer. It's not that complicated. So was it functional? So I thought. The first time I went to use it, I loaded it up. I'm actually a real estate agent, so I got a call from a client, had to take it. I loaded up the washer, headed off, and I actually got a text message later from the maintenance man saying that there is water coming out of my apartment. So obviously the water had dripped down to your apartment, Mr. Lastro? That's correct, John. Do either of you have pictures of the damage? Yes, yes. ma'am. May I see it, please? Proceed, Mr. Lastro. Yes, uh, Your Honor. I had come home, I opened the door, and my carpet was soaked. And as I proceeded to enter, I noticed that there was water leakage coming from the ceiling. All right, so you see the water coming, and who did you call? Uh, maintenance. Your witness? Yes. Will you please stand, sir? Coming up. It was really easy, and your dad, you learned it from him. You didn't install it right, and that is directly what He could have done that, though.
You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. We're back with the case of Mark Lastro, who blames neighbor Tyler Ralston for flooding his apartment. You've previously been sworn in. Please state your name for the court. My name is Jordan Lena. And so you remember receiving a call from Mr. Lastro about water in his unit? Yes, I do. I came to check out the water leak, and what I found was water coming from Tyler's apartment. I proceeded to go to the washing machine because it was still running. I turned it off, and I noticed that the water was pouring out of the hot and cold hoses in the back. So if it was coming from the hookup, that's what Mr. Lastro said he hooked up. He learned how to do that from his father. It was easy. No, that wasn't the problem. The problem was he put too many clothes in the washer. What, because it was overloaded, and so when it was on, like, the spin cycle or whatever, it was, like, what? You, you, you know, I'm not a plumber. I'm just a maintenance guy, you know. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. Okay. So, I, 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 you know, it's what I... Uh... All right. So, Mr. Ralston, I see the follow-up email from the plumber that came out to your apartment, and it says that it's a follow-up to the inspection that he did today, and the examination showed that the hot and cold hoses were cross-threaded. In other words, whoever attached the hoses put them on wrong. This is more than likely what caused your leak. Here's your receipt for the plumber coming out. Here's a receipt for carpet cleaning. $500 and a picture of the carpet, which looks terrible. All right, so this is easy. I don't know who was about to talk, but neither one of y'all making no sense over here, Mr. Lastro or your witness, Mr. Lena, because Mr. Lena, you basically just said, I'm the maintenance man, I'm not no plumber. So I don't want to hear nothing you got to say about plumbing. Judge Lake's verdict when We the People returns. You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. You've already testified, Mr. Lastro, that you installed those hoses because it was really easy and your dad, you learned it from him. You didn't install it right, and that is directly what He could have done that, though. I thought you said you installed it. I did do it. I did it. I, I, proper installation. So after he got a $250 washer and dryer from you, y'all carried it upstairs, you hook it up, you're saying that a man who said that he's a real estate broker and don't know nothing about washer and dryers, all of a sudden sat back and said, you know what, before I do this first load of wash, I'm gonna switch these hoses. <laughs> no, what I'm, sa what I'm saying is- I gotta go! I I'm ready to eat lunch. I'm done hearing this nonsense. You hooked it up wrong. It was the direct cause of the damage to Mr. Ralston's property as well as your property, Mr. Lastro. Plaintiff's complaint is dismissed and defendant's counterclaim is awarded in the amount of $750. Uh, court is adjourned. All rise. Judge Lake has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff owes $750. I don't even need to install anyone's machine. toilet. Nothing would, none of this would have happened. If you had just <laughs> not right. overloaded yeah, the washing yeah, machine, just, none of this would have happened. Maybe you just watched too much Bob Whatever, the Builder. Whatever, man. Get just out of here. So you know, you think it's... It's fault for the leak. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Maintenance Man. All right. Yeah. Just, This has been a production of Allen Media Group.